So you read the title, you know what this video is gonna be about. I'm not gonna repeat it in the intro, but I will give you a bit of a backstory so that you understand where this all started from. It's November something, 2024. I was looking through the NASA's career page to see if there's any internship slash programs that I could be a part of in the future because I would very much like to work at NASA one day. And I happened to stumble upon this. NASA's Community College Aerospace Scholar Program, a program for community college students to learn more about NASA and STEM fields with NASA educators and employees. You get to do various projects. It looks like a lot of fun. And guess who is currently attending a community college? So yeah, fast forward to now, and I've actually already completed mission one of this program because it's spring break and this is the only time I have free time. It's been tough. And so now that I finally have time to sit down and make a video about this, I wanted to talk about my experience in this program and share some information about it in case you guys, if you're in a community college at the moment, if you're interested in doing the program yourself, because I feel like I need to do some advertising because I myself had to dig around to find this program. So here's a way for you to not have to do that. I'm giving everything to you on a silver platter. So stay tuned because I'm gonna to explain to you everything I did in NCAS Mission 1. Before we start though, huge disclaimer. I am actually not allowed to talk about itty bitty details of what I was doing in the program. I can't even show you the Canva page where the program is because that's NASA property and I was told I was gonna get in trouble if I show that. And so you might be thinking, what's the point of watching this video any further? I should just click it off and like Google it. No, there is still a point to watching this video. Here's what this video is going to be about. Number one, I'm gonna explain the program in a much better way than how the website does it. And two, I can share with you my personal opinions and feelings about this program so that you can better prepare yourself for what to expect in the program. And also I do think that if I were to tell you everything that I did in this program, then what's the point of doing it on your own? So no spoilers, I guess, is what they were trying to say, but it did kind of give me FBI vibe secrecy. Like <laughs> it's a little bit extreme. Anyway, now that that is out of the way, let's start talking about what this program is actually about. NASA's Community College Aerospace Scholar Program, or NCAS for short, because I will not be repeating that sentence over and over in this video. This is a program, again, for people in community college. In fact, being in community college is like the main requirement. Other than that, I think there's like, you have to be 18 years or older, a US citizen, I think. Think. You have to show proof that you're in community college by showing that you've taken a couple of courses and a short essay, but it's not a lot. They don't even really care about your grade. And I don't even think they really care that you're in something science related. I think I've saw, I've seen some people that weren't and you know, they just have to show interest in NASA, that's it. Now the goal of this program is to learn more about NASA as well as STEM fields in general through various projects and with the help of NASA educators. And you get to show off the fact that you've done this on your resume. Now this isn't an internship, disclaimer again, this is not an internship, it's a program. In fact, you should really say that this is an extracurricular activity. That's how I'm writing it in my resume, but it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, it's still a program at NASA and it holds a little bit of weight to it. In fact, there's actually more of these programs and opportunities available through the MUREP page at NASA. So check that out if you're interested. I don't really know much about these other programs. I'm going to be focusing just on NCAS in this video. Now, besides that, you also get the benefit of being able to network with people at NASA because this is a program at NASA. I feel like this is all basic knowledge, but I have to I have to point it out. You get to network with people at NASA. And this program is in continuous, as I mentioned this entire time. It's split up into three different parts and they all have breaks in between. So you can still be a college student and not like fail all your classes and take this program at the same time, which is very good because again, this girl decided to take four hard classes on top of this program. So I still managed to survive, so you can definitely manage to survive too. But here's the general time frame of how this program takes place. From January to end of February slash beginning of March, you do mission one, five week online course. Mission two then begins in April, which is only one week long and everyone is referencing it as the week of hell. Not a good sign. Then mission three, if you get into that, 
takes place in July. It's three weeks and it's a hybrid thing. So you do two weeks of it online. And then the last week you get flown to a NASA facility. Also, did I mention, actually I did mention, I've been mentioning it this entire time, that you have to get into each part. Just because you got into mission one doesn't guarantee you a place in the other two missions. Yeah, for mission one to mission two, you have to get a 70% or higher because it's like an online course, so you get graded. And if you get 70% or higher, you get into mission two. But again, we're not gonna talk about that in this section of the video. We're just gonna talk about mission one. So let's take it back to December when I got my acceptance email. After you accept um, the invite, you have to wait another month before they send you like the link to the Canva, which is where if you've had any education in America, you've pro you probably know what like a education portal is. It's the same stuff. Besides the Canva, you also get a link to a Discord server. Now this isn't part of the official NCAS program. It's just something that people did on the side. Like they started their own Discord server. So they don't talk on like the, the NCAS work don't talk on there and they don't condone anything that goes on on there. And on top of the Discord link, I also got a Discord link to my cohort, which um, let me explain what cohort is. There are so many people in mission one. I don't know the official number. They don't have it anywhere. But from my first Zoom meeting where they explained the program on that day one, I saw over 500 people in that Zoom call which means that grading everybody and organizing everyone is a hassle, which is why they split you up into cohorts. Now, I'm not too certain if I'm allowed to say the name of my cohort, but they do give you like a theme. But here's the thing is the groups don't really mean much in mission one because you're pretty much doing an individual thing. Like you're working on the assignments on your own. You're doing the quizzes on your own. You're doing everything on your own. And so there's really no purpose to working in groups because at the end of the day, you have to submit everything on your own. So after the 23rd, which is the information session, you get access to the course pretty much. So you get access to your first week of assignments and they open the assignments every week so you don't have to do all of them at once. So once a week you have a big NCAS like team meeting or a cohort meeting, you basically get explained like what you're gonna do for the week and also ask any questions that you might have to your specific advisor. So this is the person that's gonna be grading your assignments because it's she's part of your group. Now, besides these meetings, you also have extra meetings, which were called like the subject matter expert meetings, which basically someone from NASA who knows a lot about a material or is working on something, they give you a presentation. And this happened every Tuesday for me at 2 p.m., which was quite unfortunate because I was sitting in my differential equations exam at that time, which is not a problem because they record all the meetings. Now the coursework, the course work for the program is honestly not too difficult, but it is time consuming, especially if you want to do well and get a good grade on it. So you're given information for the week, you learn this information, you do their readings, you read articles, watch videos, and then they quiz you on what you've learned. And those quizzes were really easy. Like I'm not even gonna beat around them, but they were super easy. You even get three attempts to do the quizzes and it's not a lot of questions. And I would complain that they could be a little bit harder, but I think it's good that they're easy because again, my schedule looked like this. So I'm not complaining on that front. The assignments on the other hand, definitely take a couple days to complete. And now the main point of the assignments, in fact, this is like your whole assignment throughout the five weeks is to build an infographic, which I'm allowed to say because I checked on the website. And if you go to the info session and you read the transcript, they mention you do an infographic. That is all I'm gonna say on the infographic. I'm not gonna even show you the videos that are recorded of me doing the infographic, because I can't. I can only tell you about it and I can roughly explain it a little bit, which is what I'm doing here. I'm so scared right now. This is the part that's a little bit like, Ugh. so you basically work on this infographic and this is an example of what an infographic is. It's an infographic. So you put a lot of information and you make it look graphically appealing. And that's pretty much it. In fact, when I talked to them about what they look to see in an infographic, they said, you don't even need to use full sentences. They really just want to see you take a little bit of information, add some visual like cues to that information and then put it on a poster. And they don't really care if you can or cannot do graphics, completely fine. They understand if you can and they understand if you can't. All they care about really is sourcing. They wanna make sure that if you use any information from any website or any picture from any website, that you cite where you got it from. 
But other than that, um, you pretty much just make an infographic based off of what you're learning throughout the program. You put information together every week, and then by week four, you're pretty much done with your infographic and you can make minor changes to it and submit it as your final infographic for week five. Also warning, save your stuff because I, like an idiot, was working on my project for three hours. And then luckily I did have the thought of saving my project, but then when I went to save it, it, it just crashed all of my work and it didn't save anything. And I, I had to take a break and walk away from my computer because I knew that I was gonna do something very bad to it. And that's pretty much what you do for five weeks. It's, it's nothing intense, just a bit time consuming, but if you know how to organize your time, you're easily going to get a good grade and you're easily going to pass the course. And remember, if you get a 70% or above, you automatically get considered for mission two. And so pretty much by the time you get your last grade, you know if you got in or not. So I, I got 100, I got in. And I recently just accepted my acceptance letter, so mission two is a green light baby. So these are my final thoughts. I think that this first part is like your standard tutorial of NASA. It's nothing extreme compared to what comes after in the next two missions. But as somebody who thought they knew a lot about what was going on at NASA, I can tell you that I certainly did not, that this program proved me wrong. You see, this course teaches you about NASA in an organized fashion so that you don't have to look through the website and like various different articles and videos. You just get everything handed to you on a silver platter, kind of like what I'm doing with this video as I explain to you what the mission is. Plus, NASA is not just about like what the government is doing. There's also so many private and public businesses that have stakes with NASA. They get private and public contracts and do things for NASA. So it's now expanding into this global, not even global, but more like American space economy that one day may end up as a global space economy. And so that's what mission one is about. You get to just learn more about NASA and they get to learn more about you. And after you complete this course, you move on to the second mission where you get to do even cooler things and now utilize your own skills besides just making an infographic. So NCAS is pretty much just a chance. It's a chance to learn more about NASA. And I am super, super grateful to have been given this chance. And I don't wanna say that I won't be upset if I don't get into mission three, because I definitely will. But I am at the very least happy that I've gotten into mission one and I have successfully completed it to get into mission two. And that is pretty much it. That is what mission one is about. And mission two is going to be so much fun. And that's gonna be a whole other video because it hasn't even started yet. So thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for part two. God knows when that's gonna come out.